it's time to take five for safety. It's time for another episode of Let's Not Die Today on the Toolbox Talk Show Network. Are you a small business struggling with creating a training program? Are you looking for an easy to use, inexpensive solution? Seven tap. Micro learning made easy. Create courses in just minutes. Get 10% off the annual subscription using our special code. Check it out at toolboxtalkshow.com backslash training. Our topic today, lifting safety. You know, lifting is an everyday activity that can be dangerous if not done correctly. In this episode, we will talk about proper lifting techniques and strategies for avoiding injury. Let's start with definitions. Lifting is moving or bringing an object upward, moving something to a higher position. Typically, lifting injuries are thought of as just back injuries, and that is often the case, but they can include wrist injuries, elbow injuries, muscle pulls, spinal injuries, and definitely back sprains. Let's talk history. Mankind has been trying to lift things or move things since the beginning of time. Some people have gone to great lengths to condition their bodies to lift increasingly heavy objects, and at some point, people even made a sport of it. And what man couldn't use brute strength to lift? He would invent machines to help him accomplish that task. In prehistoric times, members of tribes competed in lifting huge rocks. The first person to successfully lift one would inscribe their name on it. Weightlifting started out using primarily stones, but eventually dumbbells were developed. The barbell came about much later, sometime in the 19th century. The early barbells used hollow globes filled with sand or lead shot. By the end of the 19th century, modern plate-loading barbells had been developed. Weightlifting was introduced in the 1896 Athens Olympics Games as part of track and field. In 1914, it was recognized as its own sport. Although weight training gyms were still rare in the 1960s, they became increasingly popular in the 1970s following the release of the bodybuilding movie Pumping Iron, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Man's fascination with lifting machines started way back in Egyptian times. The Egyptians used the principle of a seesaw or teeter-totter to develop simple lifting devices such as inclined planes and levers. Moving something up a ramp instead of lifting it straight up required less force, but it took more time to move. The first cranes were simple machines that used a rope passed over a pulley. Early on, the single pulley was used for drawing well water. A single pulley changes the direction of the pull, but offers no real mechanical advantage in and of itself. Think about it this way. It's always easier to pull down on a rope rather than pull up. In the 4th century BC, the compound pulley was developed combining single pulleys into a single block. The mechanical advantage is equal to the number of pulleys used. So a crane with five pulleys allows you to lift five times more than you otherwise could. But the disadvantage is that the rope must be pulled over five times the distance. Cranes began appearing in Greece around the 5th century BC. The Romans wanted to build large monuments, so they developed the technology even further. Cranes have continued to develop, and today the most common tower crane has a lifting capacity of 12 to 20 tons. Let's talk statistics. According to the BLS, that's the Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 1 million workers suffer back injuries every year. One out of five workplace injuries are back injuries. 25% of workers' comp claims involve back injuries, costing billions of dollars for companies and causing undue pain and suffering. For employees. The top four risk factors for back injuries include poor posture, poor physical condition, improper body mechanics, and incorrect lifting. Let's talk safety. Safety tip number one, avoid lifting injuries. Whenever possible, try to store items at waist height. Lifting an item a shorter distance reduces the likelihood of injury. Use carts, dollies, forklifts, and hoists instead of your body to move materials. Tip number two, before lifting, lift a corner of an object to test the weight. Also, wear gloves to get a firm grip. Before you get started, be sure you have a clear path of travel. Tip number three, prepare for the lift. Prepare your body by stretching at the start of your shift. Warming up your muscles will reduce the likelihood of strain. When lifting, try not to jerk your body. Lift as smoothly as possible. Also, take your time. You are more likely to be injured when you're in a hurry 
tired, or cold. Tip number four, get help when lifting. If you don't have access to a mechanical aid, ask for help. Two people lifting an object decreases the weight by half. Three people reduces the weight by two-thirds. Tip number five, proper lifting techniques. Spread your feet shoulder width apart. Bend down with your knees and get close to the object. Get a firm grip. Keep your back straight and elbows close to your body. Stand to lift the object and at the same time, tighten your stomach muscles to provide back support. Don't hold your breath while doing this, however. Keep the load as close to your body as possible. And remember, do not twist or bend at the waist. Move your feet and legs when turning. Twisting while lifting significantly increases the risk of injury. The reason is that some of your muscles do not engage when you twist, creating more stress on the ones that do. Following these tips can prevent accidents, injuries, and even death. Thanks for listening to another episode of Let's Not Die Today. Remember our website, coolboxtalkshow.com, where our slogan is, just press play. As always, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you love what we do, please tell your employer about us. We love you too. See you next time.